Hi, welcome to day 15 of our journey of 31 days through the book of Proverbs. Each day we look at one chapter of the wisdom book and uh, kind of dissect that a little bit. And at the end of this 31 days, we've gone through the entire book. Today, Proverbs 15, I hope that you've read it maybe once or twice, a few times, just to get yourself familiar. Look for observations that you see, the grammatical things, uh, word choices, word order, those types of things that kind of stick out. Um, when I read through this the first couple of times, I noticed that this theme of speech and words is still kind of weaved in here through the Proverbs. Um, what you'll find, I think, an advantage of doing a study like this where we're doing one chapter a day as opposed to maybe a chapter a week is that our recall, is, is, at least for me, is much better. So we can see that these thoughts, though when we read a chapter, it might seem kind of fragmented, uh, but chapter by chapter by chapter, we see these themes weave through each one. We've seen parenting and, and, and the, the, the talk about speech and words. We've seen uh, parenting, and it's, it's all through there, the contrast between wicked and godly, between um, foolish and wise, and, and the different characteristics, the attributes of, of a godly life, the characteristics of a, of a wicked life. Those things carry through each of them. So I hope you're noticing in some when you're reading like today, you'll go, hey, I've seen that or something very similar in a previous chapter. But let's jump into 15. This idea of, of, of words, of speech is here and it's multiple times. So let me just show you the verses uh, and what the, what the writer has given us. In verse 1, it says, a gentle answer deflects or turns away anger. A gentle answer turns away anger. But harsh words make tempers flare, stirs up anger. So we can see the difference in the response to, to our words. When we have a gentle answer, it can turn away anger. It can deflect anger. But harsh words flare up anger. Verse 2, the tongue of the wise makes knowledge appealing, but the mouth of the fool belches out, or belches, yeah, belches out foolishness. So this idea of the tongue, the mouth, the words of the wise make knowledge appealing. You think about something that appeals to you, something that you see or hear, makes you want. So our words can create desire in somebody else, the hearer, uh, for knowledge. Or we can, you know, talk and, uh, foolishly and, and out it comes out like a belch. And you can, you know, the word pictures that the writer uses are, are very descriptive. So, you know, think about the somebody using words that make knowledge appealing versus somebody who's just belching out. Um, the delivery is much different. The response is much different. Verse 4 says, Gentle words or a gentle tongue, depending on the translation, is a tree of life, but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. So gentle again, gentle words, gentle tongue uh, is a tree of life, right? Helps bring life to somebody else, it's, you know. But a deceitful tongue, one that's lying, um, deceitful, trying to mislead, uh, crushes the spirit. Verse 7, the lips of the wise give good advice. The heart of the fool has none to give. So the lips of the wise give good advice. We can do this when we have wisdom. We can use our mouth to help, to build. Um, but the heart of the, the fool has none to give. There's nothing inside uh, to offer. Verse 23, everyone enjoys a fitting reply. It's wonderful to say the right thing at the right time. A lot of times we can remember people, maybe ourselves, saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Right? We put our foot in our mouth is the cliche. But how about it's wonderful to say the right thing at the right time. And I think we've experienced conversations we've been in where we've been able to offer somebody some good advice, some hope, some truth, and you walk away from the conversation like, I don't even know where those words came from, right? But God has put some things in our heart. We've absorbed his word. We've ingested it. And then he's using it so we can say the right things at the right time. You know, the, and he can do that. And then verse 28, the heart of the godly thinks carefully before speaking. The mouth of the wicked overflows with evil words, right? They just, their mouth is overflowing. They can't contain it. They can't hold it in. There's not enough room, right, is the picture that the writer's painting for us here. But the heart of the godly thinks carefully before speaking, do we take time to really consider uh, what we're going to say, how we're going to say it, what we're going to say, and to whom we're going to say it, right? Considering all those things. That's what the heart of the, the godly does, thinks carefully before speaking. 
the other theme I saw, and it kind of it, it, it links up, is the words um, the Lord detests. In other translations, it says it's an abonishment, an abomination to the Lord. So this idea of that the Lord detests, he loathes, he despises certain things, or that these things that are listed are an abomination, they're an outrage, they're a disgrace to the Lord. Here they were. Verse 8 uh, says that the sacrifice, of the, the sacrifice of the wicked was an abomination to the Lord. The Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but delights in the prayers of the upright. Verse 9, that the Lord detests, he loathes, he despises the ways of the wicked, but loves those who pursue godliness. And then in verse 26, that God, the Lord, detests, loathes, despises the plans, the thoughts, the plans are the thoughts of the wicked, but delights in pure words. So there's that idea of speech coming back again, that we can bring delight to God by having purity in our words, right? This purity that starts in our heart as he's changing us, comes out in our mouth, because we've done the things that the Proverbs uh, are telling us, that we we are gentle with our words. We, um, um, you know, make good and godly things appealing. Um, we offer life with our words, the truth. We don't, we don't, um, we're not deceitful. We don't lie. At least we shouldn't. Um, and that we can offer a fitting reply that the timing is right. The words are right to help build somebody or something back up. And we think carefully about our speech. We understand the power of a word, you know. So all of those are good for us and the people around us, but those same things, those pure words, bring delight to God. So may we consider that uh, when we're speaking, before we speak, um, and you know, we're just uh, thinking through the, a conversation we may need to have, or we're in a conversation with somebody, and what can we do to help be a tree of life to them with our words? I hope this helps you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for Proverbs 16. Thanks.